Hey everybody, Michael DiTullo here. I'm gonna be catting up this chair sketch today. If you follow me on Instagram or you subscribe to this channel, you might have seen a few days ago, I posted a time lapse to this sketch. And uh, yeah, people loved it. I really like it, I keep thinking about it. And uh, I kept thinking about, man, I should just build this in CAD. And I thought, let me record this real quick so you guys can see how I do a quick sketch CAD model. And so what I mean by a, a sketch CAD model is I'm not gonna be paying particular attention to the exact dimensions or the exact thicknesses of materials, but I'm just gonna be trying to capture the gesture of this sketch in a CAD model the way I would be doing a, a, an initial sketch model for something out of chipboard or something in the past. So for this, I'm gonna be using Fusion. I've got a file opened up over here. Let's pull that up. And let's see, I'm gonna make this a little smaller so I can keep my, my sketch off to the side. Let's get this out of here. You always gotta get yourself set up, you know? Make this a little bit smaller. Just gonna keep this open as a reference. Now you could place this uh, sketch into Fusion itself, but I kinda like to just keep it off to the side a little bit uh, separately as a little bit of a reference. And I thought a, a lot about how to make this. I think one of the, the keys about making a, a model in CAD, just like making a physical model, is you have to have a little bit of a strategy when you go into it. So the way I thought about this is, a, I think I'm gonna start with kind of a top view sketch initially. So I'm gonna come up over here, hit the top view, I'm gonna say create sketch. I'm gonna select this plane. And again, not being super particular about the overall dimensions of this thing. I just wanna get it into CAD to kinda, so I could, I, I could take a look at it a little bit better, if, if that makes sense. I'm gonna start with basically use, making an arc for the back of this uh, seat back. And I'm not gonna make this full arc like this. I think that would be a little extreme in real life. You know, I think, uh, every time you do, every time you work on a design, every time you, you go to another medium, it's, a, it's an opportunity to, uh, to evolve that design. So I'm going to pick a three-point arc here and just do a, a kind of a gentle arc for the back. And get the second point of my arc centered up and then... Now, the next part of the sketch, and I'm gonna start just by, by sketching this, this wooden piece from the top view. I'm not gonna worry about the seat pan initially. I'm gonna just create some straights here because I want these um, sides to be relatively flat. Again, thinking about how this would be made out of wood. Get another line here for this. And we're gonna overbuild it a little bit. So I don't think I'm gonna use that full length but uh, I want to have a little bit of extra in here that I could trim away once I, I start making this three-dimensional. Okay, and this is kind of roughly the shape. Now you're like, why, don't, why am, I, am I not putting radii here? Well, I find the radius tool here in, in the fillet tool in Fusion to be a little lacking. I can't quite make a G2 um, fillet unless that's possible and I just don't know how to do it, let me know in the comments if so. So what I'll do is I'll end up extruding this shape uh, and then adding the, the radii later so I can make sure they're G2. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna offset this so I can give it some thickness to extrude in basically. And let's just, let's just uh, do 20 millimeters. And then I'm gonna close this shape in. Now I've got a good general sketch, top view sketch of this that we can extrude out to make this kind of wooden piece that I could trim away parts. So now I'm gonna use the extrude tool um, I should be able to taper this. So let's let's see how this goes here. 
because you know the back here is is a little bit tapered right i want to i want to taper that a little bit mm, but i only want to taper it in one dimension <laughs> think how i want to do this i might want to do this a different way let's just let's just start with this and see where we go As tapering everything kind of needs basically like applying taper to every single part I don't want to do that though I don't want to add thickness I could do that by doing by offsetting the sketch and then doing a loft in between them that would be another way to do it where I could get that uh, let me see if I can do this let me see Let's see can I duplicate this sketch I think I'll just extrude it straight up for now, just for the purposes of this exercise. So I'm gonna come up basically the total height of the chair. And again, I'm just kind of estimating this. Let's see here. Yeah, let's go there. Again, I'm gonna kind of cut away at things, so don't have to be super precise. Okay, and now I'm going to add those fillets in. So I'm going to first start with these interior walls. I'm going to set this to G2. Give that a nice, generous radius, say 350. I'm going to repeat fillet. Set this to G2 again. I have to go a little bit over 350, probably. 360 or something like that. Again, just I'm, I'm just basically sketching in three dimensions here, right? So I don't need it to be totally precise, but let's get a little bit better than that. Three sixty-five. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So now, because I've done that radius afterwards, I've got a really nice smooth curve that's gonna pick up the light nicely. So I basically have made this C shape that I now can trim out of. So now I'm gonna do another sketch from a side view. I'm gonna do that on this plane here. And I'm basically going to create some shapes um, that I'm going to chop out. So I want this leg to be pretty narrow at the base here. Tapering just a bit. And I'm going to make this angle a little bit less extreme. So this is what I'm going to chop out of the shape. Kind of thinking in a negative space terms almost. Come on, close. There we go. So this is basically the shape of the chair. I'm gonna do the same thing with the radii here. And Let's see, do I want to move this a little before I do that? Let's, I think let's move this point a little bit. Yeah, I think that's a little better. And maybe let's thin this up just a little bit. Yeah, a little bit more dynamic. Okay, so I'm gonna finish that sketch. So now I have this, this funky sketch that I'm gonna to use to extrude as a cut basically. I'm going to set this from one-sided to symmetric. 
and see I'm going to pull this shape. And you see as I've pulled that, it has, has cut through that kind of C shape and, and just left what I wanted. see how we're starting to build that chair already. So now I'm going to come back to my fillet tool and get some nice generous fillets in these spaces here. Oops, wrong one. Careful as you're selecting in there. And Let's come back out to the right side so I can see what I'm doing. And set this to G2 again. And I don't want it to be, I want there still to be some, some nice definition there. I'm just gonna set that to 200. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same with this top one. Again, come back to the right, come back to G2. Make this a little bit more generous so that there's a, some nice kind of dynamism to this, even though this is kind of straight vertical, some really nice flow here. Let's go with 300. There we go, it's kind of the first pass at that wooden part. I'm gonna hit A for appearance, and I'm just gonna put a wood on this temporarily so I don't get it, this part uh, mixed up with um, the seat pan that I'm gonna be building. So let's pick a, just kind of an unfinished maple for now. And that's totally going the wrong direction with the wood grain and everything, but we will fix that in a bit. But I just wanna just drop some wood on it so I know what part I'm thinking of versus this one. Okay, so I'm gonna do another sketch uh, to create this kind of dynamic seat pan here. And I'm gonna do that sketch in this plane here. Okay, and I'm gonna do this kind of similarly to how we did our other sketches in that I'm going to not put in any, uh, any radii. I'm gonna basically kind of block it in. It's kind of the way I think about these things and have that seat pan go down a few degrees and these legs come back. And then see there's kind of this nice return here so you're not just, you know, when you're thinking of your thighs on this, it's not just like a, a piece of metal. So let's get that return on here. Okay, and now I'm gonna do the same thing and offset this. But I'm not gonna offset it quite as much, right? Because this, this part is probably gonna be some kind of laminated wood and this would be sheet metal, right? So we don't want this to be as thick. Again, I'm not gonna make it real thicknesses. I think I made this like 20 thick. I'm gonna make this 10 which would be thicker than it would be, but again, I want it to kind of read in renderings and things like that. And then I'm gonna close this shape off here. Notice how when I did that offset, right, this line came down a little further than I want it to be. So I'm gonna do the line straight over to intersect. And then I'm gonna use this cut tool here to delete that little excess. Here, I'm gonna let this be at a bit of an angle. There we go. Now we have enclosed that sketch. You can tell it's enclosed 
because the interior has shaded into this kind of light blue now. You need it to be closed so that you can extrude it easily. So now we've got that shape. I'm gonna hit the extrude tool once again. And you'll notice I'm kind of intentionally making this chair a little bit, you know, this a little bit lower, this a little bit deeper. I'm going from this kind of more of a side chair proportion to a slightly loungier chair proportion. So I'm going to hit this to extrude. Oops, I actually unselected it. I'm going to go to symmetric again. Let's come into the front view. Now, see, notice how it's, it's making itself a, a new body, right? When I extruded before horizontally, uh, it was a cut. And that's because if I come far enough, it's going to automatically, if I, if, it's going to automatically make it a cut if I interrupt this other part, right? I don't want to do that. And I'm going to come a little bit narrower. So it's, it's basically intersecting that part. Well, maybe we'll just have it just touch it. Now, because it's just touching, notice how it made it wood, because it's like, oh, you're just touching, you want me to make this part and this part the same part. I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna join it. So I'm gonna come back down into the sub menu and I'm gonna say new body. Now it's defaulted it back to steel. Hit enter. Again, I've got that part. Okay, so we're blocked in. We're gonna do the same thing where we, we hit those, we uh, use a, the fillet tool. Let's start with this fillet here. I'm going to do these internal fillets first because if I did the external fillet, it would, it would interrupt the shape, right? Let's go down. Maybe let's see what 300 looks like. Yeah, let's do 300. I'm going to hit heat fill it and I'm gonna hit this guy so maybe start with 280 hit G2 again looks like I need to go a touch bigger 290 maybe 295 there we go it's looking good and I'm gonna hit fill it on this I'm gonna turn this wood part off just so I can see I'm doing a little bit better. Uh, fill it. Notice how few tools I'm using here. I think, again, if you have a strategy, you think about what tools you know how to use. Let's go 125. Sometimes you just don't use a lot of tools. Again, come down to G2. Start with 130 here, see what that looks like. Maybe a little bit bigger. 135. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn my wood part back on. And it's good, I've got a pretty nice, quick sketch model. I think this guy's, I don't know, is he kicking back too far? I mean, I'm just thinking of your booty in the chair here. You know, thinking of a person. I don't think that's going back too far. Okay, now I have got this nice cutout in this dimension, right? So I'm gonna go to the back. I'm gonna do another sketch in this plane here. Okay. And let's see, I think I'm gonna use, what tool am I gonna to use to make this? Should we do a conic curve? It's not quite, it's, it's more of a, a spline. So let's see, I don't wanna to come too far up on that radius. Let's see what we think about this. Something like 
this. I'm going to have to edit that point a little bit. So notice how this is kind of coming over center. I'm going to flatten that down just a little bit. Pull this out a little. Bam. Now I'm going to make a line that I could use to mirror that spine. And I'm gonna say mirror, grab this, mirror line, which is that little line I just made, perfect. Okay, now I've got a nice smooth spline there. I'm gonna close that off. Oh, see, now I've got a closed shape because that has shaded into a light blue. Finish my sketch. Come back to extrude once again. I'm only gonna come in one direction because I just need to slice to the back. There we go. That is starting to shape up. Okay. Let's get a little bit uh, more precise on the materials we want to use for a quick render. So first thing, I'm going to switch this stainless steel to a powder coated metal. So let's go paint, powder coat smooth. And I'm just going to do, I think I'll do white for that. Oh, I have to download that. And just going to drop that over the stainless and that will replace that material. Uh, and then for that solid wood, let's close this down. I like to use um, ash. I, don't, I like the, the grain lines in ash quite a bit and then I, I will mess with them. So I'm going to replace that. Uh, I think I used maple before with some ash. Okay. And then... I'm going to differentiate the grain just a little and I'm going to bump up the thickness. And this is so it will read a little bit more in the rendering. Okay, that is looking pretty good. I don't usually like to have the rays or the pores in it. I think sometimes it just goes a little over the top. Now I need to change the direction of that grain so it makes a little bit more sense. Um, we're gonna do that by, let's see, I should be able to I click on you. No, you're being funny. Hmm, I used to be able to do this here. I think, actually, before I change that grain, I want to add like a little bit of a, um, a split line in this. You see how I have like a line here, like this is broken uh, into, into different parts. Before I adjust that grain, okay, next thing I want to do is add a, a part line here in the wood. You see how in this guy, I have a little part line that's showing and kind of like this is, this could be a CNC piece of solid wood and this could be a bent piece of wood. I've made these, these pieces a little bit straighter so I could push that part line back a little bit. I am gonna do that by again, creating a sketch. Let's make that part line here. Uh, yeah, maybe we want to move that actually closer to like in the sketch. Let's do that. Now I'm not going to make an enclosed shape. I'm just going to finish that and then I'm going to use a separate tool because I don't want to delete anything. I just want to split these parts, right? So I'm going to come up to modify. I'm going to say split body. This is the body I want to split. That's the tool I want to use to split it. So you still notice how it's made that big red circle basically showing where I'm going to split. I'm going to say, okay. So now notice how my bodies have, have multiplied here. I 
I've got some separate parts. And I just want to basically hint that maybe there's kind of a, uh, a tongue and groove type of thing. I guess I could have done this in the same sketch. I could have put these little uh, basically dowels in there, but we'll just make a new sketch. So let's just say we're going to do this. Yeah, 20 millimeters, I felt that feels about right. And we're gonna do another 20 millimeter. Okay, say finish sketch. I'm gonna use the same uh, split body tool. Modify, split body. I want to choose, this is, I want, I want to split this body and I want to split this body and create these kind of circular elements and select some, some splitting tools. So that's that, that sketch I just made, one, two, and I'm going to say, okay. All right, and I've got a pretty well sketched out uh, chair here. You know, it's not perfect, dimensions aren't perfect, but I think we can just make a nice quick render to show the design intent. So in Fusion here, I'm gonna switch over into the render space. And let's start controlling those texture maps a little bit. So this guy, you'll see as I, I've, I've hit texture map and now I have some controls Right, where I could kind of push and pull this grain around to a place where maybe it makes a little bit more sense. Right, and get that kind of center knot out of the way. Okay, I'm gonna do the same with this part here. But I like to do these individually so that it feels a little bit more organic, right? I don't, I don't want them to be exactly the same. I want them to feel like they're, they're different pieces of wood. Actually, I'm gonna rotate this a little too. And you know, you just gotta kinda with these things, you gotta futz with it until it feels right. I want this, this grain to be going a little more vertically. But for some reason, here we go, here we go. That's, that's feeling better. Let's come way out here. See now coming out here, that, that center, that green patterns out here so the Grain is getting much more vertical. That feels a lot better. Let's, let's come back to this guy and do the same. So I'm gonna drag this back. And rotate that just a little. Much better. A little bit more realistic. And now I need to do the same with this piece. That grain is going to run more horizontally, right? Like, if you think about how you would select a piece to bend. So I'm going to drag that way down. So again, we're getting just kind of some straighter grain. Let's see, okay, that's going the wrong way. A little better. Okay. And you can see my, my little dowels are in here too, right? I think what I'm gonna do, just to show off these dowels a little bit, I'm gonna just hit a quick 
quick little chamfer on those those radii just so the light will hit it a little better. Let's pop back over to the sign. Uh, let's see, let's turn our dowels off. That's one. Oh, that's a leg. That's a leg. That's why it always helps to name parts. So back, dowel, and dowel. Okay, now I can kind of come in here. Probably save this. I haven't saved it the whole time. Always be saving. And just hit a slight little chamfer on all these round surfaces. Come over to the other side, grab these. And I don't want it to be too big. But now watch when I turn these dowels back on, right? That light is gonna hit that. I mean, in reality, I'd want it to be as flush as possible, but I think just for the, the sake of the render, I want you to see it. Um, I'm gonna do the same on this, right? Cause we're gonna get, um, like these two pieces of wood are meeting, it wouldn't ever be perfect. So let's turn you off. Let's turn this one off. And repeat chamfer. I think I'm gonna do even smaller, just like a 0.5 millimeter one. Good. Point five. Okay, and I'm gonna turn this part off. Turn my legs back on. Do the same repeat chamfer. It's one of the reasons why I like using Fusion is I can go back and forth between the render and the modeling space pretty easy. And for just a quick sketch render, it's fine. You know, I don't need maybe a full key shot for this. Turn back, back on, Let's save again. Let's go back to render. And let's start thinking about this rendering here. I'm gonna do a, a similar angle as the sketch. I'm gonna, let's do setup here. Let's go to white background. Let's see, get sharp highlights, I didn't like that one. Let's position that. something like this. Let's just see what that's starting to look like. Not bad. Let's do, let's see here. I'm gonna darken this wood down a little, come back into appearance. Just make it a little more brown. I don't like, this is a little too wavy here too. Let's, uh, let's fix that. It's like a weird knot there. I don't like.
A little better. Let's go back to setup. I tend to like a, a focal length around 60, 70. I'm not into the like faux or uh, isometric type rendering thing that's going around. Our position here. So see, some I'm trying to get a, some some shadow in here so we can get that depth. Let's see what that's starting to look like. Here we go. That's a little better. Looks like my powder coat a little bit glossy. I take that down a little bit. Come back to appearance. I'm gonna up the, the roughness, down the reflectiveness here. Probably scale up the texture a bit too. Let's see how that did for us. Yeah, it's gonna be better. I think I'm not, I mean, a lot of reflected light over here. I wonder if it would be better if I created a surface. So let's do that. Come back to design. And I'm going to say make a box. I'm going to do it on this level here. And I'm basically just going to make a giant sheet of paper. where I can control the, the reflectivity. I'm going to say new body. And I'm going to make it minus one millimeter thick. Okay, so now I have this this giant surface my chair is sitting on. Let's let's set that to a nice gentle paper texture. like a paper in here somewhere. Those are base materials. Boom, don't need that. Ground plane, there we go, paper. Take the reflectance way down on that. Just like zero. The roughness up a little bit. I see I'm getting the edge of my paper in the shot here. So I think I'm going to need to basically make this a nice photo studio. Gonna make another box. And we're gonna do it. It's really right in this plane here, which is like wafer thin. Let's see if I can grab it. Actually, you know what? I'll just do it from the top. It'll be easier.
pull that up and then we get a nice big fillet here here we go now when I come back into render made myself a nice little photo studio wall All right, let's get a view going here. Seeing the edge of that fillet, I gotta pull that back. Back over to design. And then pull, go to press pull. back should do it yeah now again are the proportions on this thing perfect no but I think it's a nice little just quick sketch again to kind of show off the idea I think that's maybe a better view. Let's see what that's going to look like. Just using the in canvas render to get a quick sense. Still not loving this this grain here though. I'm gonna have to pull, pull that down even more. This is too wavy still. do this and back to the texture map control grab that part do I have it nope 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 come out of that again this is why it's good <laughs> to label your parts Do a render. Now I could build a bunch of lights. Usually I, for a nice render I will build some custom lights, but this is just a quick render to take a look at it. Just want to make sure I'm getting enough contrast on here before I hit render. You know, so I could do this, it's tough. I could do this view and I get a nice view of this back, but now I'm losing this leg, right? So do I want to see that? Or do I want to see this other leg? Which is exactly what I went through when I was sketching it. I kind of feel like I want to do that so I can get a sense of the leg. Let's see. I might want to change our focal length a little bit. down a little bit lower so now I'm, I'm getting that full sweep right down just a touch get that out of there yeah not bad all right let's Come back here to aspect ratio. Let's do a 16 by 9. I'm 
gonna give myself a little bit of extra space around here and then I'm gonna come down here and hit render. 16 by nine, I'm gonna pump this up. I'm gonna do this up in the cloud and I'm gonna click go. So that's gonna, that's gonna kind of crunch away here up in the cloud so it's not happening locally so I can do other things. Probably it'll take a few minutes. While I do that, I'm just gonna see if I wanna do some other views maybe. It's kind of a fun view. Kinda like that. Oh, maybe I missed a view here. Oh, that looked like. Hmm, that's pretty cool. Let's turn off this thing. Yeah, a little bit easier to control. It's like a real nice low down shot. Let's put that in the render too and see what we think. Zoom in a little bit more. Panic is being a little goofy today. Push that. It's a little bit more of an extreme angle, so let's let's push the focal length on this a little bit. Too much. Hmm, yeah, I'm liking that. Question is, do I want to rotate my background so I get that behind me? Sure, let's do it. All right, let's go back to design. I'm gonna rotate this thing. There we go. That should do it. Back to render. Just gonna turn that off again just so it's a little bit easier. Get it? Let's see. Oh, dang, still have a little bit of that there. Ah. I'm gonna rotate it a little bit more. That should do it. Come back to render. if I tapered this too much. Yeah, it's okay for a sketch. Maybe it's just because my focal length is 
little extreme here. There we go. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Let's kind of get that a little bit more in the center of the scene. And bam, I'm gonna come back here, hit render up in the cloud again. All right, there we go. It looks like our first rendering is done. Not too bad. I'm gonna download this guy. It's gonna download it as a JPEG. Save this to the desktop. Now, I never quite just accept what comes out. You know, I think a lot of people are like, oh, what gets rendered is, is what you gotta use, but not true. Let's pull this into Photoshop real quick. So I'm gonna start, the first thing I'm gonna do is hit the camera raw filter on it. It's like an easy first step. Uh, and this gives you like basically a lot of things that you get almost like an in Instagram, right? We get exposure, contrast, also things like texture, and clarity. So we're gonna pump these up a little bit. You can see it gets much more interesting quickly. Let's get a little bit more contrast. And then I'm gonna put just a very, very slight vignette on it just to give it a little more dimension, too much. Yeah, that's a good start. So look at that difference, right? So that's where it started, just coming out as a render, and then just a couple quick tweaks, much better. Next thing I'm gonna do is go to levels. Again, I'm just gonna amp this up a little bit and tighten this down. Right, like, just makes it pop off the screen a little bit more. Hit save on that. Let's see if our other render is cooked yet. Not yet, just about. Keep futzing with this one for a minute. And so, you know, one thing I wanna do is just kinda pull this edge out. Now, probably should have been better with just kind of setting up my lights would I could have done this in in uh, I could have done this in my rendering but I didn't and I just want to pull this edge out a little bit so I'm just gonna kind of come in here and select this a little bit roughly So I can just add a little bit of a highlight on this surface. And smooth that selection down. Okay. Too many things going on at the same time between this and uh, what's going on in Fusion. It's not liking that. Okay, and I'm just gonna get a nice soft airbrush going. Let's 
turn this way down. See how that just kind of pulls that edge forward? Probably should do the same thing over here too. Just a little bit though. Sure, I could do this with paths, but it's just a quick rendering. Just don't need to be that precise. Smooth that down again. Again, come back with that soft brush. Just like the light is hitting that just a little bit. I feel like this flattens off a little bit back here too. So it's like, once you get started, once you get started, you can't stop. I wanna show this is radiusing just a little. Probably could use the magic wand to select this too. That's okay. I'm gonna smooth that a little bit less. There we go, let's take a look at that. So here's where we are now with it. Let's hit save actually. And then let's go back to where we opened. That's what it's like straight out of Fusion. That's with just a few minutes of Photoshop on it. Let's do the same with our, with our other render here. That is nice and baked now. Download you. Close that up. All right, let's open this render. So I'm gonna come back here, hit my camera raw filter. It should remember what I just did. Yep, there we go. So we're off to a good start already. Again, with my levels, just kind of pull that back one up a little bit. Bring this down a little. Bam, it didn't do much right there, right? Already, look at this, already a huge difference, even without doing those little white highlights. But there you have it, a nice little, from this quick sketch here to an initial rendering. Pull you out of the way just to how I might do it, just for, for a quick presentation to a client. Um, you know, again, not being super precise with the dimensions, I probably would have like measured a similar chair if I was doing this for real, just so I was a little bit more in the, in the ballpark. Um, but I think if I just wanted to show really quickly what this idea would be, you know, this would be a good start and a good place to iterate from. You know, maybe I'd go back to that, those early sketches in the model to get this a little bit more fluid or change this angle so it's a little bit more like this. You notice know, here it doesn't, I didn't have it taper, right? But here I made it taper. I'm like, I don't know, is that working? Not quite so sure. I'd probably come back and turn, tone this grain down and make it a little bit smaller too. Uh, so it's not taking over the render so much, but a good initial first pass. Again, Michael DiTullo, hope this has been helpful. Um, quick little example of how I use Fusion to go from a sketch to an initial CAD model. If you like videos like this, hit like and subscribe. 
um, and I'll see you next time.